It's Pete from Cheap Homesteading, and today we're going to be rebuilding a hydraulic cylinder. My uh, buddy dropped off his cylinder off his Kubota B21, but basically uh, all the cylinders have the same principles, and uh, you pretty well rebuild them the same way. There's some variations, but this is the most common type of cylinder and how they put it together. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to be rebuilding a hydraulic cylinder. He picked up a new rebuild kit. It's basically all the uh, seals, all the O-rings you need to rebuild the hydraulic cylinder. I said this cylinder is off of a B21, but basically I think B20s and a lot of other Kubotas of that era had these uh, cylinders. So the first thing you got to do is kind of diagnose why is my hydraulic cylinder leaking. Um, the first thing is wear, like it's just wore out. So if your cylinder moves this easy, uh, you probably just need to put new seals in it. It's probably just wore out. Number two is you look for marks, uh, scratches where you've dropped things on the cylinder rod. And this is a bucket cylinder, so it's really common for things to fall out of the bucket and land on the rod. So you look for any marks scratches whatever and if that looks all good number three is basically the rod is bent and it kind of puts force on the seal and wears it prematurely um so you can pull it out and see if it looks straight but really we're going to be pulling it apart and we'll throw a straight edge on it make sure it's straight before we put it all back together so let's start pulling it apart well the first thing you do you throw your cylinder in the vise and there is special tools to remove these caps, but most people don't have them at home, but most people do have a pipe wrench. Uh, you know, pipe wrenches do make little marks on the cap, but as I say, most people don't have the proper tools to actually take the cap off without making a mark. Uh, you can still make a really good repair. Uh, there's just gonna be very slight marking on the end of the cap. Wow. Okay, so this vise was meant to be a small engine vise, not uh, to uh, put a lot of torque on it. So I'm going to take this to the other uh, vise I have. So now we're going to check the uh, condition of the cylinder before we rebuild it. Uh, so get a flashlight, shine down there, see if there's any scratches, debris, or whatever. Uh, if that looks good, just go and rebuild it. But if there is some scratching, um, a good rule of thumb is basically if you can feel it with your fingernail, uh, it's too much. Uh, so it kind of gives you a good idea how deep a scratch has to be before um, it can really do damage to a seal. So just keep that in mind. If you just rebuild a cylinder that is scratching in the bore, it's probably not gonna last too long. So we're gonna file off any burring that happened because of the uh, pipe wrench. So this nut is 24 millimeters gonna remove this o-ring 
So you want to make sure that the rod isn't bent. So you put a straight edge. It would be nice if I had a long straight edge, but the rod looks really straight. And you do it in multiple locations by just keep turning the rod. Okay, so it looks good. You want to keep everything really clean. So this is the packing. We're going to uh, change that first. So you get a pick and you don't stab yourself, but you got to get this ring off. So the old ring, you just kind of force it through with the pick until it breaks and then you just pull it off. Inside here, there's a little rubber seal. Okay, so you gotta just keep fishing till you get that O-ring or you cut the O-ring and it comes out easy. So there you go, that's out. Clean it up real good. Okay, so I got some hydraulic oil in here. You coat it. It's got a square rubber O-ring and that goes in the center groove, the first thing that goes in the groove. And make sure that the square O-ring is sitting flat and it's not twisted in there. The next one is this ring. They are stretchy, but they're not um, as stretchy as one would think. They're pretty tough, so you kind of have to wheel it around until it comes on. Kind of hard to show you. There we go. And you kind of keep going back and forth until it's on. You look at it and you go, my gracious, it is like, like stretched. But if you push it, and keep compressing it, it kind of goes back. It's actually quite amazing material. So you just keep pushing it and squishing it back and it actually goes back into its pretty much its old shape. So, you keep doing it. so there you go, it's on. Now you get these rings and I'm gonna pop them on. They're self-explanatory. I like to use, I see the one slot is here. I like to put the other one at 180. So one slot's there, the other one's there. Okay, so in here you have a seal and this is kind of like your dust seal. stuck in there there we go his cylinder was leaking from the rod it was just coming out where the rod was and this is the seal that leaks it this seal here is just a dust seal to keep uh, dirt from going in but this one here is the one that actually seals the oil and it it is flat, flat, flat. So that's why it was leaking. So now we got to try to get that out. So you get a pick and you jam it into the seal. And then you try to get it out. Man. There you go. Wow, seal came out in multiple pieces. I'm gonna spray, we're gonna clean the area. So this is the seal we're gonna put in. If you look right here, there is a little lip. Um, so basically when there's pressure in the cylinder, it pushes against the lip and it pushes the seal against the rod. Um, if you put the seal in backwards, uh, the flap, instead of pushing to the rod, it'll open up and it'll shoot oil out of it. 
So it's really important that you make sure the lip of the seal goes towards the oil. And that is a principle for almost every oil seal. That's just the way you do it. Um, so just make sure you do that at the right direction or it'll just shoot out. Okay, so the lip is pointing down. You kind of put it in the groove, hold it with this finger, and then shove it all the way around until it's in place. So it's really important to make sure the seal's not twisted. So you just put your finger on it, make sure that it's seated. So that's good. So the dust seal goes here and it basically just keeps the dust out. The lip on this one has to point out because this job is to scrape the rod as it comes in to get all the dirt off it. We'll put it here and we are just gonna give it a gentle tap. Okay, so there you go, the seal is installed. So now we just gotta change this O-ring. So you kinda keep an eye where this backup ring is and the O-ring is. So the backup ring goes this direction. This is the new backup ring. It's really hard to see, it looks flat, but basically there's a concave on one side that meets up with the O-ring. It's a flat one on this side. The flat side goes against this side of your cap. And you make sure that that is seated. And then you get this O-ring and you put it in and you just slide it into place. Okay, so that's on. We'll change the cap O-ring. So you get your cap, you throw some hydraulic oil on all the sealing surfaces. And when you push in, gently turn and it should slide on. There is an O-ring that goes on here. Right here, there's a little groove to match up with the O-ring. This side doesn't have it. So it's important to make sure that this little space goes towards the O-ring. I like to put some brake clean or carb cleaner on here and then get all the oil off and put Loctite. And you see now, when you slide this, it's got some restriction. The seal's actually got force against the rod. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of hydraulic oil in the bore on here. Now we're gonna slide it in. These are expanded, so it's gonna take a bit. So you push, and I find I wiggle around like this a little bit and it just slides in. You don't wanna hammer it in.
The cylinder is done. I'm gonna throw it outside so my buddy can pick it up. But I just wanna make this video to show you guys that it isn't really that hard to, to rebuild a cylinder. And uh, most people with medium to moderate um, mechanical ability can do it. So um, that's about enough for today. And you guys have a good one.